Hurricane Katrina is about to unleash her fury on the Gulf of Mexico. Today. Category five. This thing is a monster. We cannot stress enough the danger this hurricane poses to Gulf Coast communities. Every person is hereby ordered to immediately evacuate the city of New Orleans. Good evening, I'm Brian Williams. It was the last weekend of summer five years ago. A lot of Americans were on vacation. They might have heard something about a big hurricane, possibly even aiming at New Orleans, but there had been hurricanes before. Of course, it then turned out there had never been anything like Katrina before. If you watched any of our coverage five years ago, then you know we were there for the storm. I was inside the Superdome. And we stayed in that city for those first awful days and weeks. And in the months and years that have followed since, we've made dozens of return visits, and we will continue to. After I returned from Katrina, a producer here came up with the idea to sit me down and record my thoughts on videotape as a record of what happened there. Everything, the anger and the despair and some awful memories. So what you're about to see is hard to watch at times. It's a kind of time capsule. So we don't forget what it was like when Katrina hit New Orleans and the Gulf Coast five years ago. WWL First News at 7.05. A mandatory evacuation for the city of New Orleans. It is now illegal to reside in the city of New Orleans. The traffic is backed up on Airline Highway all the way. Yes, to and it was pretty much gridlock on both sides of the interstate. My boss said I've just gotten off a conference call with the National Weather Service. And this is the doomsday scenario. This is going to hit New Orleans. Superdome was going to be the shelter of last resort. We made the decision to go, and as long as we were going to go, we were going to go all the way, and that meant get inside that Superdome for this storm. Hey! We just happen to be here. All right. I think about the faces I saw going in that dome. A lot of people were getting along, helping each other. We don't mind waiting to be safe from the storm. I'll be glad uh, to be in the Superdome shortly. These evacuees were arriving, some of them with children, some of them with very few belongings. They were obviously, most of them, poor. This is an NBC News special report. There are dire predictions here in New Orleans, Louisiana tonight about the human suffering the Category 5 Hurricane Katrina could bring and if the worst of the predictions come true. When they lowered the huge corrugated steel doors at the back of the Superdome, we were inside with everybody else locked inside for the duration of the storm. Have you been relatively happy here? Oh, this one here is cool because we got shelter. We got a lot of show. So you think you got good seats? Oh, yeah, we have Maybe not for a Saints game. <laughs> Excellent. Hey, y'all. Hey, I love it. It was a choice between the hotel and leaving town and the Superdome, and uh, it just has to be the safest place. The storm wind started in the morning. The awesome power of Hurricane Katrina is making itself known. The roofs are coming off, shingles are flying, pieces of glass and metal shattering and flying down the street. Let's start with NBC's Brian Williams at the Superdome. Brian, you emailed us that photo a second ago, and we've been showing it to our viewers. Try and describe what we're looking at. The brightness you see is, in fact, daylight. That I is slipped 
on the ramps going down to the actual field, the turf. I went down hard, and I was lying on the AstroTurf, on my back, just going to take a breather for a second. And I looked up, I saw a pinhole in the roof of the Superdome. That pinhole, lo and behold, grew larger and larger. It was welcomed at first. Here's how perverse the atmosphere was inside the Superdome. People welcomed the hole in the roof because it was a source of daylight. There was a noise that I described on the air as an arriving New York City subway train. You heard some shrieks in the stands. With every hole in the roof, you think that'll be the end of the... That's got to be the height of the storm. That's got to be the end of the damage. And it just kept going. We knew we were in the middle of a massive hurricane. first night, Monday night, the hurricane had blown over. We looked back at the Superdome, half the roof had been ripped off. We looked back at the skyline, all the windows at the Hyatt Hotel had been blown out. We were stunned to look around and see what it had done. Some of the damage is truly bizarre. The third story of this building piling onto an automobile innocently parked in the road. Remember, the most important thing in New Orleans, those streets were dry. You can replace windows, but water like toothpaste can't be put back in the tube. The city's historic district was hit hard in some ways and dodged a bullet in others. One of our correspondents used the words, uh, they dodged a bullet in New Orleans. The president later repeated it when he was trying to defend his uh, administration's response to this. He, he said the media people kept saying we dodged a bullet. I guess we're guilty of that, but not of what happened next. Now to the structure here behind us. I remember saying on the air, hoping somebody would hear me, somebody, somebody in authority. Those people are still in there. The living conditions in the Superdome went from grim to untenable, unlivable, very quickly, in one day. It is hot, it's damp, there's no moving air, it's getting very dirty and, shall we say, very aromatic. And still, no announcements or information on conditions here outside when people can leave to go home, depending on where they live in New Orleans. Those people were still in the Superdome. This was just day one, and I found it outrageous. No one had told anyone anything at the height of the storm. I get that there was no power. Where were the bullhorns? Where were the National Guardsmen to say, folks, the bulk of the storm is over. We understand the damage uh, so far is not severe in, in the city of New Orleans. But they somehow didn't deserve that. But I'll never forget the people we met in there. What I can't shake is knowing how kind and decent most of them were. What I can't shake is the feeling that some of the people we met and got to know aren't around anymore. Joining us tonight from nearby Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Michael Brown. I remember on Monday night's broadcast, we had a live interview with Michael Brown, the head of FEMA, who was full of assurances. Look, we were ready all the way from Florida all the way to Texas. We were ready anywhere it was going to have. I had teams staged from Fort Worth. I remember saying to my 14-year-old son, you know, I'll be back. This, this thing comes ashore. We assess the damage. Bada boom, bada bing. I'll be home in two days. I'll, I'll see you shortly. And boy, was I wrong. I don't think I've ever been so wrong in my life. set my alarm for 5 a.m. I had to get up and report for the Today Show. And I went to the window. And I remember thinking, what the hell is that? 